How's it going everyone? So I'm doing something a little bit different because all these devices you see right here are on the latest version of watchOS. That means I have the Apple Watch SE2, the Series 8, and the Apple Watch Ultra. And in today's video, I'm going to not only share with you my experience with this OS, giving you a feedback how it's like on all three of these devices, but also answer some questions I typically see in the comic section, starting off with compatible devices. So, so long as you have a Series 4 or newer Apple Watch, you could actually run this firmware update of the developer beta. Just as time making this video, this is a Series 4 Apple Watch. Watch OS 10 developer beta 1 is not supported yet, unfortunately. So this is still on the standard Watch OS 9, but will become available in the near future. So if you have a Series 4 or newer, you're in good hands. You'll be able to be able to use watchOS 10 and take advantage of its new features. Number two, a most commonly asked question that I see a lot is a lot of people are constantly asking, yeah, I'm shopping for BMW, don't judge me, <laughs> about the Siri watch base. Now that the smart stack exists, which all you do is just rotate this little crown, and it'll actually bring up these new smart cards, which is very similar to the Siri's watch face. And yes, it is true. So if we actually go ahead and open up our watches or watch app layout, it's just, I have so many on this one, I apologize. But here is the Siri watch face. It still does indeed exist. And the Siri watch face will continue to adapt depending on the apps you use the most and show you the appropriate detail that best suits you from basically machine learning AI, I guess, and it'll actually suggest the cards that best is appropriate for you. But notice how I use the digital crown. It doesn't bring us back to the smart stack because with this watch face, it doesn't actually do that. It doesn't do this. It doesn't take us to the smart cards. So that's something you definitely take a no uh, notice. Once you use the Siri watch face, you can no longer use the smart stack. I personally prefer the March smart stack to be honest. And it's pretty neat because if you long press, you can actually like customize some of these widgets and you have access to three additional shortcuts for some shortcut apps that you like to. So if we actually exit of one of these and I want one of the shortcut apps to be the activity, super easy to do. And now I just tap on it, it takes me to the activity app with its new redesign layout as well. I do a whole in-depth on all the new changes and stuff like that in that video right there. But I'm not going to repeat everything from that video into this one. And another commonly asked question, even though, again, I addressed it on the previous video right there. Uh, night mode still does exist. You just have to tap edit on the wayfinder. Select it right here. You can use digital crown to select it off. Select on always or auto. Cool thing about auto is it will actually utilize the sensors at the hardware that the screen display has to identify the ambient lighting. If the lighting is really down, it will automatically go into night mode. And for my review on that, it works extremely well, especially when you're driving at night, the watch will automatically go into night mode, giving you the best night vision experience possible. So it actually works really well. Now I did feature the redesigned weather app on the previous video. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover this one more time because it honestly is one of the best redesign we have seen on an app in general. As we go ahead and launch them, well, it's not loading because only one Apple Watch is paired to my iPhone, but here you can see how nice these new like background animation is. This app was a much, a very necessary update because this new look is insanely gorgeous. It really does utilize the larger display on not just the SE2, the Series 8, but also the Ultra. It's really nice. But control center on all these Apple Watches is 100% identical. If you have a cellular Apple Watch, you'll be able to monitor your cellular reception right there, which leads us to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Are you tired of paying too much for your cell phone mobile service? Well, guess what? With Mint Mobile, you could get a premium cell phone service for just starting at $15 per month. And the beauty about Mint Mobile is that you do not have to give out your personal information to run like a soft credit check or something like that, like other cellular provider retail stores typically would. Because Mint Mobile, all they need is just your name 
and address. Mint Mobile cares about your privacy. And then in addition to that, they don't use a middleman. They sell cell phone service directly to you, which means you don't have to pay extra without any trickery like other cellular providers would. And then if you need a cell phone service for your whole family, Mint Mobile has families plans that just start with two lines. So you and your family can easily all stay connected. And here's the best part. You continue using your current phone that you're using with Mint Mobile. You could also keep your same telephone number if you like, as well as your contacts all super easy. So ready to also sign up? Feel free to use the link in the description down below and follow this website, Simple Steps. Before you'll know it, you'll be enjoying some amazing cell phone service at just starting at $15 per month. And for my personal experience with them, they're definitely the pioneers in terms of them being the future cell phone provider of public the market. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Sign up today for Mint Mobile and enjoy this affordable cell phone service. In terms of like new control center shortcuts, they're all the same like we previously had. It's just a new design. But in, out of curiosity, I do want to show you something though. The school time. Okay, it's exactly the same. Do not disturb is exactly the same. And theater mode as well. Similar animations, even the school time mode is still exactly the same. And you still have to hold to actually like exit off of this. In theater mode, of course, you have the capability to use digital crown to take a weak peek so you don't disturb others around in case you're in a movie theater. And to disable, of course, muscle memory, but you press the power button to actually. But another change that I failed to mention, you can actually create custom workouts if you're subscribed to Apple Fitness Plus. Because if we go ahead and launch the fitness app right here and actually tap on Fitness Plus, I'm going to go ahead and start my one month subscription right now trial probably gonna delete afterwards but right away it says build your plan here if we actually go in select the amount of days you typically work out for me is five days a week and my workout activities core I don't do cycling but I do hit it's a lot of strength training and that's about it here I could review the suggestion plans I'm pretty sure I could add some more so equipment I like to use dumbbells for around now 10 minutes I'll say add activity and then I go select the music I like to actually work out with for whatever I'm like hitting update and create plan and just like that we have created a workout but this is not what I want to go ahead and show you what I want to go ahead and show you is something awesome that I found on the watch app on our iPhone if you launch the app and actually go into the workout section right in here and if you keep going down in the workout tab, you can actually set a default playlist to go on automatically as soon as you start a workout here, this workout playlist. So now you can actually select the playlist that you want to actually hear all the time on default. So if you have like a workout playlist you use all the time at the gym, now whenever you start a workout with your Apple Watch, it will automatically start that playlist once you start a workout right here. And yeah, it did. Not bad, and I do not want to get copyright, but yeah, it automatically did that. So that's new for uh, watchOS 10, is the automatic playlist to play when you start a workout. But aside from that, between these three different Apple Watches, again, it's all similar. You have the new like app layout capabilities. You can switch between grid or list view like this. You just can't make those cool designs anymore, like I previously stated. But if you go on the very bottom, you could switch to grid view from here as well. If you don't want the list or your grid or vice versa. But all in all, I'm really impressed with WatchOS 10. I really do dig this new redesign in the watch face of the overall UI. I think it's really unique and interesting. It's been a while since we actually had like something new for WatchOS. And this one definitely hit the spot. Apple did a fantastic job with the new interface. I thought for a second I thought I wasn't going to be happy with this new control center location, but it works out really well. And of course, Apple Pay, it's still the same. Double tap here to have access to Apple Pay. Double tap the digital crown to activate App Switcher. All is the same across all these three Apple Watches. However, if you're debating if you should download the developer beta or not, 
my recommendation is do not unless you're okay on experiencing possibly one of the worst battery lives possible because this apple watch my ultra for a fine example it was i'm still not used to it it was at 70 percent this morning and look at it now it's at 19 percent. so this should give you a general idea of what to expect if you do decide on downloading this but again this is only the first beta out of like what eight so over time over the next few weeks i'm sure everything will get get better be improved and resolve this battery issue that we've been experiencing it's not just the ultra taking effect the se2 i noticed also has a similar effect and the s series 8 it just drains your battery a lot quicker it's not efficient yet anyways there you guys have it i highly recommend watching this video where i go more in detail on like the new apps and such or that video even where i've covered my favorite 20 features of watch os 11 that i go more in depth this video was primarily my review and answering a few more questions i've been seeing get asked a lot about watch os 10 so if you enjoyed like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one see ya